This is an experiment to produce copper sulfate crystals. Copper sulfate is a product of the reaction of an acid and a base, which produces salt and water. In this case, the chemicals we're using are sulfuric acid and copper oxide. So to weigh out a copper oxide, we need a balance. The glassware that we're going to use involve a watch glass, a filter funnel, a conical flask, a 100ml beaker and a measuring cylinder. We use a spatula to measure out a copper oxide and a filter paper is needed for the filtering procedure. For the two stages of heating, we need to have a tripod and a Bunsen. For the first stage, we're going to use a wire gauze. For the second stage, we're going to use a pipe clay triangle. We also have an evaporating dish. All right. First thing we're going to do is to weigh out some copper oxide. We need one gram of copper oxide. So we need to use our spatula to remove the copper oxide. So I'm just adding a small amount to start with. Okay, we now have a mass of 1.085 grams of copper oxide. The copper oxide is going to react with some sulfuric acid, so I need 20 mil of sulfuric acid, which I'm going to warm up. So I'm going to measure the 20 mil of the sulfuric acid in my graduated cylinder. And then I'm going to pour that into a 100 mil beaker. We're going to warm that sulfuric acid. And that has to be heated to just below boiling point. Then we're going to add to our beaker, we're going to add our copper oxide. We're going to use spatula to add our copper oxide. And then we're going to use a stirring rod to stir the copper oxide into the sulfuric acid. So you only need to add a little bit at a time and then stir it to make sure it all fully mixes and all fully reacts. All right, so I'm going to start adding a little bit at a time. And stir it up a little. That's a bit too fast, so I'm going to lower the flame and continue to add my copper oxide. You have to be careful with this because we use sulfuric acid. So that's why we're taking some precautions because sulfuric acid is quite corrosive. Now it still looks black because we've still got our excess in copper oxide, so there's still copper oxide present. So we're going to let that heat for a little bit, but while we're doing that, I'm going to prepare the filtration flask. So we need to filter our, our solution using a filter paper. And to do that, we need to fold it in four bits, making sure that when we open it out, we have three sections on one side and just one section on the other. We can add a little bit of water to hold the filter paper down. I think that's heated for quite long enough. So I'll turn that off. And now we need to leave that a little bit of time to cool down. Okay, now we've allowed this solution to cool a little, we can um, take it over to the filter flask and pour our solution, give it a bit of a shake and pour our solution 
into the flask. You'll notice that there's a clear blue solution in the bottom part of the flask. That's known as the filtrate, and that's copper sulfate solution or copper sulfate aqueous solution. Left in the filter paper is black copper oxide. And you can see that's um, going to stay in the filter paper because it's insoluble. So that black copper oxide is the excess copper oxide and it's called the residue. So we're just going to filter that. And after we've filtered that, we're going to pour it into our evaporating dish and evaporate some of the liquid off. So we need to change our wire gauze. And instead of using our wire gauze, we need to use a pipe clay triangle so that our evaporating dish sits neatly on top of the tripod. So we've got our evaporating dish here. So we're going to pour our filtrate once it's all um, gone through the filter paper into here and evaporate it a little and then um, leave it overnight and see what lovely crystals we've got at the end. Okay, so now we've filtered out the copper oxide from the solution. We have our copper sulfate crystals there ready to form in here in our solution. So I'm going to pour our solution into the evaporating dish in the pipe clay triangle. And I'm going to evaporate half the water. And once half of that's evaporated, we can leave it overnight and then come back tomorrow and see what the crystals look like. In summary then, we've just done an acid-base reaction. We've combined copper oxide, a basic oxide, with sulfuric acid to produce copper sulfate crystals and water. We evaporated the water to produce these copper sulfate crystals.